What is up my preppers, my bushcrafters, my fellow knife freaks. If you are looking for the best bushcraft knife available, this is the video for you. I have been on a quest for the perfect all-purpose bushcraft prepper survival outdoor knife for a long time. So I went to the biggest knife show in the world to talk to knife experts, knife makers, and to survey the knife landscape. This is a longer video than what I typically publish, and I have timestamps that you can follow. However, if you are in the market for a bushcraft knife, I would highly recommend that you watch this video from the beginning to the end. Invest a little bit of time because you are going to learn a fair amount about bushcraft knives, about survival knives, prepper knives, all of that sort of thing in the process. If you skip straight to the end, you're gonna miss a lot of attributes of knives that might work best for you because what is the best knife for me is not necessarily going to be the best knife for you. I talk with a total of eight different knife companies in this video. I'm going to drop a link in the description. If you follow that link, it'll take you to my website and I'll have more details on all the knives discussed here with various purchase links to what I think are probably some of the best online pricing, most competitive pricing you're going to find. I should also note that if you're looking for an EDC knife, I had a companion on this trip, the Marsh, and he was on his own little side quest looking for the perfect EDC knife. You can check that video as well. So enough about that. Let's get to Blade Show in Atlanta, 2023. Opening day of Blade Show, and you are at the front of the line. How long have you been in the line? Been here since Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Is this your first Blade Show? It's my third one. Are you here for a particular knife? I am. Dark Timber, um, getting one of his custom knives. So, really excited about that. Well, <laughs> odds are high you'll get through, and uh, it'll I hope, be, yeah. I hope. Get, get any further up in line than I am, so. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm here with Shane of SE Knives, and we met last at SHOT Show, and we were talking about some of your knives, but this time I'm, I'm at Blade Show looking for the perfect bushcraft prepper survival style knife, and I know the SE6 is one that's talked about a lot. What makes that a contender? Well, let me, let's back up and just deal with this as a one part question. The perfect knife doesn't exist, okay? So what we always say, and we, we stole it from Morris Kahansky, is knowledge is weightless. Yeah. You know, so if, if I am in a survival situation, that's my survival knife, or this is my survival knife, my little Farmer X there. Okay. So understand because we're, we're a little different because we spend so much time in the field doing our own classes and stuff. So we kind of under have the understanding that the perfect knife, knife doesn't ex exist. Sure. sure. Nor does the perfect skill set, but where you can marry skill and tools that's when you can get the most out of whatever you have in your hand. So we talk about survival knives or bushcraft knives or preppers knives. They all kind of land in that four to six inch blade for the most part yep. as a general consensus. Yep. My preference is I like a knife to do knife things. Like I like our PR4, even the RB3, it's eighth inch steel. So it's not that super thick quarter inch steel that you get with like our SE5. Which knife is that here? Uh, well, here's a perfect example. So, this is a 3HM, okay? It's, it's eighth inch thick. Okay. Most people would not consider this as a survival whatever knife, but this knife takes a lot of abuse, but it excels at cutting, All right. which is what we want a knife to do. If we want a 6HM, there's certainly applications that this knife can do, like batoning four inch wood, that this knife can't do because it's only a three inch yeah, blade. Yeah. So I think for me, you have to, when we have this conversation around a knife, there's some things that people rarely take into account like skill set, like what's the knife made of? What are your other tools? Yeah. If you're a prepper or you're in that survival mode, hopefully this is not your only tool, but, right. it, but it, if it is, I'm gonna want to use this to maximize it, but I'm also gonna want to protect it because yep. because it's it's perishable to me. Sure, sure. Okay, if I chip this blade and it ends up like this because I'm batoning frozen locust wood, yeah, then I've just taken a tool at a rotation that becomes vital. Yeah. 
So, so for me, we can have this conversation all day long, and the internet is just rife with opinions. Sure. But very few people ever talk about the big picture. Right. You know, like what's your skill set like? What's your other loadout? What are you carrying with you? So, and some for some people, this may be the perfect survival knife. Well, if you're in a survival situation and it's at home in the safe or home in a dresser, it's not your perfect survival knife. If all you got in your pocket is your Swiss Army yeah. Farmer X, right. guess what your survival knife is? Your Swiss Army Farmer X. Yep. Yep. So, we like 1095. It takes a lot of abuse. So a lot of our knives are made for hard use. 1095 sharpens up easy in the field, easy to maintain an edge. Doesn't have the edge retention like some of the harder steels do, but that's why we do it. It's because we want it to be field serviceable. Okay. Okay. What kind of sheath do these come with? So our HM series uh, has a leather sheath option okay. as well as a Kydex All option. Right. Uh, and then our SC6 has our injection molded sheath, which is everybody knows uh, they last a long time. Yep. Super durable. Doesn't thermal cycle like Kydex does. It's not as sensitive to heat and not as sensitive to uh, cold. Okay. So the polyethylene sheaths are just more durable from a lot of, a lot of standpoints. Yep. Retail price? So we only see uh, we only do dealers and distributors, but you're talking about 100, 120 in that in that ballpark. Okay. All and right. so for me personally, I, my, I gravitate towards smaller, thinner knives because yep. I like a knife to do what a knife's supposed to do, which is cut. Yeah. But if I had to have one knife, my personal favorite is it's kind of lost in our lineup. It's called the Laser Strike. So same thickness as the SE4. But it gives me a five-inch drop point blade where the, the center is along the midline of the blade. All right. Uh, it's got a choil. It's got the bow drill divot. There's actually a ferro rod and tinder tabs inside the handle. And so Inside uh, the handle? It, yeah. So so this knife comes with a Kydex sheath oh, okay. and a washer that you can unscrew, and there's a ferro rod and tinder oh, no tabs shit. inside. That's cool. And so... A lot of people don't, this doesn't pop up on the radar because we've got the SE3, 4, 5, 6 lineage, yeah. and this is kind of an outlier. All right. But it's a five inch blade, has great cutting efficiency, high saber grind. Of course, it's 1095 carbon steel, backed by the same warranty, but this is actually one of my personal favorites. Nice. I went to SE looking for the SE6, but Shane really made a compelling argument for the laser strike. The hidden ferro rod was really a really good idea in case you're in the field or you lose your main ferro rod, you've always got that backup so long as you have your knife. In fact, one of the contestants on a loan had to call out because he lost his ferro rod. At $140 retail price, it makes it a strong contender, but let's shop on. Matt from White River, tell me about White River. Yeah, so White River is a small family-owned company, uh, small production runs. Uh, it's me and my dad, my brother, my stepmom, and a few dedicated friends and family uh, employees as well. Um, we started in 2011 and we've been coming to Blade Show every year, so we brought some uh, custom offerings here that we no normally don't have available very often, and uh, I wanted to talk to you about some of our survival knives. Yeah, yeah, so I'm on the quest for the perfect prepper survival knife. This assortment attracted my attention. Yeah, what would you recommend? Well, let's just start with kind of what I think is one of our ultimate. It's the Firecraft Series FC5. So it's got a five inch blade, the top spine is sharpened for using with, use with a ferro rod. Okay. It's got a stainless steel bow drill divot in there if yep. you need to make a bow drill fire. It's uh, it comes with a nice Kydex sheath system. This one's got a dangler loop on it. That's how it comes standard. Snaps in, good retention. Nice. Um, a ferro rod holder that uh, comes with a ferro rod as well. Okay. And then these are three quarter inch space holes. So if you want to change it to a tech lock or some other type of mounting system, oh, you, nice. could, you could do that. Uh, they're all made 100% in the U.S., guaranteed for life, no okay. questions asked. Okay. Um, so that's retail that's, price on this one. Uh, that one is 300. Okay. Retail. The Firecraft series is is all designed for basically survival or making fires in the wild. Yeah. So we do have seven inch versions, which is the same handle, just a little bit longer blade. Okay. Or four inch versions that go along with the series, and even a little FC 3.5 that's a little bit more of an EDC, nice, nice. lighter weight version that you can uh, also start fires with. That doesn't have the bow drill divot, but it does, it does come with a ferro rod as well. Okay. And these are all the same steel? They're all S35VN. However, uh, sometimes we do do uh, collaboration runs with like some of our dealers and things like that, and we'll do like a run of 3V uh, with a dealer like DLT Trading or something like yep. that. So. That was the other one I wanted to show you was our Ursus model, which is literally designed our, our take on a bushcraft knife. It's the standard version is S35VN, 
Uh, it's got a four and a half a half inch blade, so it's called the Ursus 45. Okay. It's just got a great ergonomic handle that you can use all day. It doesn't have hot spots. Um, and this version here is actually a three three V version that's on its way to DLT right now, and they're going to be releasing it probably next week. So. But we shipped it out the day before the show to them, so they should be releasing it anytime now. So. Nice. The White River Firecraft knife was probably the prettiest knife that I saw. I liked the orange on the inside. The hardened spine was really well thought out for striking a ferro rod, the stainless steel divot for the bow drill. You can really see that this is a fire centric knife. It also had a stainless steel blade, which living in Maine, where half the year feels like winter and the other half of the year feels like mud season, we have a lot of precipitation, things are wet a lot. I was really leaning towards the stainless steel. The Kydex sheath and dangle loop, those were also nice touches. Now all the knives come with those, made in the US and guaranteed for life, just like SE. However, the $300 price point was a little rough. As a kid, I thought this was the best survival knife, the Buckmaster 184. Imagine me as a kid holding this thing. It's massive, it's heavy, it's pretty intimidating. Great fighting knife. Um, has the hollowed out handles that was typical in the 1980s with your fishing line and your waterproof matches and that sort of thing. However, time, experience, wisdom, and advancements in knife making technology have taught me otherwise. While this is still a very serious knife, it's not something that I would want to carry on a bug out or use for bushcraft purposes. So I'm talking with Chris from Williamson Copenhagen Knives. Tell me a little bit about the company first. So Mikkel Williamson is the designer for Williamson Copenhagen. And he's been a custom designer for the past 25 years. And he finally got to a point where he's like, I want to get my blades in more people's hands. So what he decided to do was go with a production line. So he's designing a lot of blades as a production line and his criteria is one, it has to be a good blade, good design. And then the second thing is it's gotta be affordable for people. As we were talking, I'm on the quest for the perfect prepper survival camp craft type knife. Okay. And you have one that caught my eye. All right. What, what do we have here? So this is the wild one. This blade is a fixed blade, of course. It has, it's made of Sandvik 14C so it's a stainless, so low maintenance, but the Sandvik 14C is developed so it'll hold its edge. Wood handle, we have jimping up here on the spine, so therefore helps with traction. So if you ended up having to stab at something, you have more traction here to keep your hand from going whoop, right across, all right? We have this little thing right here, all right. So a lot of people think, oh, well, it has a ferro rod on it. You're going to use that for the ferro rod. No, because this has a very radius uh, edge on it. You're not going to get a good bite on it. But what we do use it for is that if you're cooking over a fire or you're cooking coffee over a fire and it has a bale wire on it, we can use this to pick it up off the fire. Right here, you may see a difference in coloration between here and here, that area right here. This has a very radius edge. This is a very hard edge. It's a very 90 degree. So they have this here, so it's a very hard edge. So you can use that on the ferro rod. Now from here, throws quite a bit of sparks. So it's not a garbage ferro rod either, which is nice. Because sometimes you'll get yeah. ferro rods and they just don't throw. Yeah. The retail price? Retail price on this is $125. Nice. And that's with the case and everything? That's with the leather case. Because the blade, leather case, you get the ferro rod with shock cord on it so it doesn't fall out. Right. Once you start using ferro rods, they get smaller in sure, diameter sure. so it can kind of slip out. I got you. So use the shock cord, keeps it from coming out. It also comes with a dangler. Actually, if you notice, if you could see mine right here, yeah. so right here are the dangler. What makes that nice is you can just use this and go here, but when you sit down, it kind of jams up on you. Yeah. So when you use a dangler, you can actually move it and sit down, you know, it keeps it to, from jamming into I got you. it. I got all that for 125. Bargain. I almost bought this knife. The price couldn't be beat. It had the dangler loop, didn't have the Kydex sheath that I wanted, but it had a lot of the attributes that I was looking for. It had the hardened spine for ferro rod striking, the hook for the billy pod over the fire, that was nice. They thought ahead by adding the loop around the ferro rod. I couldn't understand how they were making this knife so cheap. The answer is they're making it overseas with overseas materials. So if you want made in the USA, this knife isn't for you. If you want a quality knife that is at a reasonable price, this could be the answer. For a long while, I've been using this as my bushcraft knife. This is a Hella Knives designed by Les Stroud. Simple, full tang, 
but I was looking for something a little more modern. Drop the wooden handles, probably a Kydex sheaf rather than leather, but this has served me well. And maybe I shouldn't have rocked the boat and just stuck with this, I don't know. Maybe I should have gone looking for a different knife at the show, like maybe an authentic Filipino balisong, like this one. Um, I ended up buying it there. I didn't really intend to buy this knife there, but there's an unspoken rule in knife shopping. If you bleed on it, you buy it, and this one bit me. Actually, if you watch some of the videos, you might see uh, my finger nicked with a Band-Aid wrapped around it. On that note, they also have a Balisong flipping competition at the show, and I filmed that, so you can check in my channel if you want to see the Bally Comp 2023 professional Balisong knife flippers. But I digress. Back to my bushcraft quest. So I have found Ethan Becker, and I've been waiting here a while to talk to you because if anybody can help me with this question, then it's probably you. I am looking for like the ideal, all-purpose, survival, bushcraft, sort of prepper, workhorse knife. Okay. Can you point, point me in, in some directions here. What do you recommend? Okay, first of all, there is no one knife, okay? I'm finding that out. It just doesn't exist. Yep. Now, one of the things that I've always said is that a large knife should do everything a small knife should do, and a small knife should be able to do anything a large knife does. I always start with this, because I carry this every day, and uh, have literally driven these into white, and grain white oak, where they just won't pop out, yep. and got over 45 degrees of flex before failure. Okay. And honestly, anybody who doesn't realize about 30 degrees that they're overstressing the knife, yeah, they deserve what they get. A small knife like this should be able to skin and do the basic bushcrafty stuff with the survival kit that, that you can make it with. And I stole this idea from Dave McIntyre, who won alone the second year. He and I were to knife nuts in the woods thing down in Cal uh, North Carolina. So, piece of inner tube, yep. light, direction, small fire steel, and a sharpener. All right, nice. And it's comfortable enough to wear underneath your t-shirt. And I always try to carry it right side up, and then reach in, grasp it, do what you need to do, hands find hands, goes back in there. All right. The uh, Norwegians, the Swedeskis, the Daneskis, and the Finskis all carry their knives, even large knives, around their neck. This is as close to the one knife as I'm willing to uh, give. I refer to this as the Armageddon knife. It's the Armageddon my, knife, all right. It's my BK2. It's a quarter inch thick. Everyone calls this the tank. Yes. Fire, uh, fire prep, all that stuff, as, I mean, uh, wood prep, it really does a good job. If you have to field dress a Buick, it'll do it. And on top of it, it is, I took this again, this was at the North Carolina thing. Yep. I asked the guys yep. around my fire or our fire to use one knife all weekend for everything. And I pulled a new one out of the box and set it out. And we used it to split out small kindlings because we had it. The only thing we had available was red oak that had been underwater for about two months. And we split out enough uh, one by one to make food for breakfast and dinner All right. for six guys for four days. All right. Okay, and okay. we did all the food prep with it, everything else. And is it ideal for any of those? No. But if you take this knife and a club, you can take down a tree uh, six, seven inches in diameter, about as fast as you can with a hatchet. All right. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. We use a steel, uh, a 1095 Provan. But what we do is we source the steel in Germany because the chemistry is the best of any 1095 in the world. Interesting. And it's cold rolled. Okay. Now cold rolling 
gives you a very important advantage. It squashes the molecules and makes it for a tighter grain structure. All right. And the tighter your grain structure is, the stronger the blade is, and the more wear resistance it has. And that's true across all the BKs? Yeah. The BK-11 really wasn't on my radar as a survival knife, but if Ethan Becker says it's a survival knife, it's a survival knife. Small, compact, lightweight, and with the custom sort of little survival kit that he's made for it, perfect. You're more apt to carry this knife, leaving, so if you're in an unexpected survival situation, odds are higher that you'll have your knife. While it wasn't the one true knife for me, I was convinced enough to buy one. The BK-2, however, was on my radar. That thing is a tank, and a lot of people have used this knife for a long period of time, using it in all kinds of bushcraft-type purposes. It's a massive knife. Again, not the one true knife that I was looking for, but I was convinced enough to buy one. I'm gonna put this thing to the test over time, um, but it's not really a bushcraft knife per se. Um, it doesn't have a lot of the fire-making features that I was looking for, but this is gonna be my, my truck knife because everyone needs a truck knife. I'm here with Pat from Zero Tolerance Knives. Pat, tell me a little bit about Zero Tolerance. Zero Tolerance, we're a company based out of 12th in Oregon. Um, we've been around for a long time, really focused on the law enforcement military originally, then transitioning to kind of a, a brand for everything. We focus on high-end materials, titaniums, carbon fibers, uber premium blade steels, um, all made in-house in, in uh, the USA. You're holding a newer knife, is that right? This is correct. It's a brand new uh, fixed blade from ZT called the 0006. Uh, MSRP at $400 with a matte price of $320. Um, we have a nice machine G10 handle here, uh, titanium butt cap, titanium guard with a 3V steel, which allows for heavy, heavy use, very comfortable grip. Hands not going to slide. The 3V lends itself to hard use, bushcraft series, uh, lots of toughness. Uh, strong edge retention, and then we do like a clear Cerakote for corrosion resistance. Really helps for lasting, long lasting uh, utility of the knife. Very comfortable in your hand. Nice Kydex sheath here uh, with a belt drop. One of the things that I like about this is the guard yeah. that I'm not finding on some of the other ones. So, you know, in a self defense situation, this, that's an attribute. Yeah, it gives you a lot of extra grip and comfort and, and reliability there. And the big, the, the sharpening trail gives them a lot of room for uh, life on the knife. So, this is a rounded top? It is. Yeah. Looks great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. You can probably see what I liked most about the Zero Tolerance knife was the hand guard. It's like a knife, knife fighting feature. It protects your hand so that if you uh, have to pierce a zombie skull, you know, if you're bugging out, you want a, a knife. I'm looking for the one true knife. I want something that can pierce a zombie skull if I'm bugging out. And if I need to stab something, I've got the guard here on this knife. If I do that here, I've got higher odds of my hand running across this thing. <clears throat> and that's going to be a bad situation. But knife fighting and bushcraft, those are two different knives. And if I had to choose one, I'm going bushcraft survival. But it should also be noted that there are survival attributes to having these guards, particularly like with the zero tolerance. You've got these holes running through them. And in a survival situation, you can fashion, fashion this to a stick, run some paragord through it, and uh, now you've got a throwing spear or you can, you know, play Rambo and, and kill wild hogs for dinner. The Cerakote over the blade was also a nice touch, but probably the killer for me was the rounded top. I need to be able to strike a ferro rod and the $320 price point, that was a bit steep. I'm here with Andrew Demko and line here yesterday was insane. Yeah. As I mentioned, I'm on the, on the hunt for the perfect sort of camp survival all-purpose knife and you've got a newer blade here. So this is called our free rain model. We have a few different models of the free rain. We have an imported Taiwan free rain in 10A. Okay. Um, it retails for $150. And then this is a free rain with an American made blade. And this thing is $200 is the retail price. And it is an awesome price for Magna Cut American made free rain blade. A lot of the ones that I've been looking at are not Magna Cut. Magna Cut right now is the hottest. And it, it's a fantastic steel. It has a lot of hype. Yeah. And to my to my understanding, it's all uh, justified. It's all right. It's got it's got it all for a knife. Now maybe you don't want a magna cut sword, yeah. But you want a magna cut fixed blade. The Demco knife was really nice. Wasn't quite the proper bushcraft knife that I was looking for. And while he makes a strong argument for magna cut, I'm not entirely sold on magna cut yet. It hasn't stood the test of time, I don't think. And I heard some knife makers on the side conversations at the show talking about running into troubles with it in the forging process. I don't know that much about it. I know a lot of people like it. It blends 
qual best qualities of different steels, but I had to shop on. I stumbled upon someone at the show that some of you might recognize. She had some advice for me as well. Melissa Miller of, of Naked and Afraid fame, and you work for Blade Show. What number of Blade Show is this for you? This is my seventh year at Blade Show, so yeah. What brought you to Knives in the first place? Um, so working with survival and bushcraft, I used to teach wilderness survival, and that naturally led into testing and reviewing knives back in like 2017, 2016. So. Okay, so you're the perfect person for this question. I'm here looking for the perfect prepper bushcraft camp knife. Fixed blade, do you have any advice for me? There are so many good companies. I think there's like a thousand, there's about a thousand exhibitors here. Um, my first bushcraft higher end knife, if you will, was Topps Knives. They're here and they have like hundreds of models and they have a lot of survival uh, models and a lot of great woodsman models. They actually um, just recently released uh, the, the woodcraft, which I'm carrying on me right now. And this is a great bushcraft blade that I uh, want to get out and test out a bit more. But that's what I'm carrying on my hip. So yeah, um, they are just one of many companies that offer some great survival and bushcraft type blades. How many knives do you have? Probably four to 500. Yeah, <laughs> I have an entire room dedicated to knives. Are there any particular knives that you're looking for here? Um, I'm just walking around and filming for the show and getting you know a taste of all the prototypes and everything that's new. A lot of companies come here to release their new knives. Yeah. So that's what I'm here, mostly not to buy, but to just film and get some good uh, content for the show about all the new stuff that's been released at the show. Thank you for your time. Thank you so much, have a good one. Yeah. I'm here with Andrea from Lion Steel. Tell me a little bit about Lion Steel. So Lion Steel, uh, we are Italian knife makers, we are manufacturers, and we have mainly three families of knives. We have the what we call the high-tech folding knives. Then we have the modernized, modernized traditionals, and then all the fixed blades family. I know you're interested more in the fixed blade family. I am. So that's why we're here. And we're looking at the T6. Yeah, this is the T6, is the latest uh, big blade we made. Uh, we made the first run with the K490 steel, 1000 pieces, and then we decided to move to the CPM3V. It's a very strong knife uh, with uh, our classical uh, solid handle. We call it solid, it's an internal handle. Yeah, it's a handle. comfortable handle. Yeah, so you don't feel the, the metal right. on the fingers. This is milled from a um, single block of material, a canvas material. It comes with uh, black, green, and natural canvas. Uh, the blade is uh, 5.83 inches. Okay. The thickness is uh, 0 0.22. It's a very strong knife, and, uh, and the steel is beautiful. It comes with a kaida sheet with a molly system. Nice. And you can reverse the nylon nylon parts. Okay, so great. Yeah, that's also nice. for left and sure. users. What's and what's this sell for? This one is around 350. Uh, the satin blade is uh, 330. The lion steel knife was certainly heavy duty and a bit pricey. $320 price that he cited. That's in euros. That makes it like a approaching a $400 knife. I just wasn't going to spend that much money on that knife, and it still wasn't so as, as bushcrafty as I wanted. I'm here with Dylan from Tops Knives. A lot of people know your company. Yeah, yeah. Now tell us briefly about it. Okay, so our company was started in 1998. Um, we've, we're based out of Idaho. We use all U.S. material. Okay. We're, we're made in the U.S. We do some collaborations with uh, with Mazer Knives out of Italy. For one knife, other than that, of our almost 300 knife catalog, wow. we do everything in-house. Uh, we do anything from small EDC to giant choppers. A um, little, little something for everybody. As we talk, I'm looking for like a prepper, bushcraft kind of knife. What, do, what would you recommend? So, to fit that do-all scenario, yep. um, one of our, our most popular blades for that those categories yep. is going to be our Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft knife. Okay, I've heard of this knife. Yep, we offer it in a 1095 high carbon or a 154 CM, so depending on your environment sure. and how much blade maintenance you want to be doing. Um, this this particular version here is the 154 cm. We've got our red and black G10 scales on it. We have nine different handle variations between different colors and material. Um, but it is a five inch blade. I think close to 11 inches overall. Uh, quarter inch thick or eighth? Excuse me, eighth, not quarter. 
Great bushcraft knife, great survival knife. We have our modified Scandi grind on there. Okay. So you're going to get a razor sharp edge on there. Come with our, our Kydex sheath. We, again, make these in-house. Yep. yep. It'll come with a ferrule rod. Yeah, I noticed you've got the 90 degree for the ferrule rod. So here. we don't have 90 degree spines. Not... If you look on the end of the handle, there's oh, yeah, yeah. what we call a shango notch. So okay. that notch we put there to strike the fire steel. I see. So that way you're not having to roll your edge on your 90. Okay. Or use your actual cutting edge okay. to get that Interesting. to throw sparks. Okay. So, and then the handles have bow drill divots built in. Yep. And they're high enough on the handle that when your knife is in the sheath, you can still access that, that bow drill divot for safety. Okay. Retail price on this one? Uh, full retail on something like this is going to be $295. Um, our dealers do set their own pricing, so you'd probably find it closer to around the 200 to 20 mark. Okay, okay. And the other knife you recommended? And then if, if you want some with a little bit more, we have our Brockimo. So similar features, you're going to have our modified Scandi grind. Yeah. We're going to have a little bit more thickness to the blade. It's got a little bit longer blade, but you've also still got your bow drill divot uh, with this. This is a 1095 high carbon, so that, that's the only steel we offer this knife in. All right. um, 1095 is a great steel. You, you know, we could use the most rudimentary system possible and still put an edge back on a 1095. Um, so the Brockimo would be another great option. There's no 90, it doesn't come with a fire steel, so yes. you would have to find, either use your blade to strike a ferro rod or have an alternate means of, of throwing sparks. Okay. But uh, these would be probably the two I would jump to first if I had to carry a one tool option to meet those those scenarios. Sure, sure. Retail price on this one? So full retail on this is two twenty five. Right. So with the with the with the ten ninety five the price is gonna be lower. Okay. Um again dealers set their own pricing. You can probably find it out there for around one fifty to one seventy. Great. Thanks for your time. Hey appreciate you. So I chose the tops. It had the best or the most attributes I should say um, of the knives that I was looking for. Synthetic handle, strong stainless blade. I bought the stainless one, and this thing has stood the test of time. This one is number five, 55,328, Brothers of Bushcraft. If, if there's gonna be a bushcraft knife labeled Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft, it's probably a good bushcraft knife. Synthetic case that I was looking for, ferro rod that I was looking for. You got a little jimping here, so if you need to stab a zombie skull, I've got a little more protection there ferro rod notch here. I would have liked a dangler hook here to let it sit lower. They make aftermarket cases for these. I did buy one of those and some various add-ons ended up being almost as much as the knife itself, but it didn't have the strong retention that the tops case has. So I ended up sending that back. I think I'm gonna improvise something here so I can get a dangler effect on it. The double bow drill divots are nice. Hold it here, spin it. I'll test those out in time. And the price was decent. You could, this, I spent $190 case and all at the show. That was the show price. And, and again, follow my link in the description and I'll take you to some retailers. You might be able to find it 195, 200 online. The blade is also very hefty, very wide, not as wide as the BK2, but a slightly more narrow blade will give you a better cutting edge. Scandi grind, while the stainless is lacking the extra hardness of a high carbon, Again, I'm, I'm living in Maine, I'm in a lot of wet conditions, I want stainless. Now, what didn't I like besides the lacking the dangler loop? This ferro rod feature, which was really a selling point for me, isn't quite as great as I had hoped. So, um, you know, you're getting some sparks there, sorta. This is a newer ferro rod that hasn't been scraped up too much yet, so that plays a factor, but I can't quite get the leverage that I'm looking for on that. If I turn it over, he said this wasn't a 90 degree angle and he's right, I can still get a bit more sparks. But now compare that to the Hella knife. Stainless steel, true 90 degrees on the spine. I mean, it's like night and day, throwing sparks. I throw them all day long. Well, actually, you can even see on this thing, I've got a strong 90 degree here. I mean, that's throwing good sparks. The BK2 doesn't have a 90 degree here. I really can't get much of anything on that. I think that, um, you know, if you've had experience making fires in the wild with a ferro rod, that ability to get, throw a bunch of sparks out there is, 
that matters. Time will tell. I'm gonna give this thing some testing in the field. It's where I landed on this knife. I'm happy with it. It's got a great blade. I'm gonna use this in future videos. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think was the best knife, what makes a good bushcraft knife, what makes a good survival knife, that sort of thing. What would you have chosen? And uh, other than that, I'll see you in the next video. Have a knife day.